Welcome. Today we're going to look at two Obsidian extensions to help create a writing dashboard so you can kind of track your progress and motivate yourself to keep going. The first one's going to be activity history and the second one is called commits. Before we do that, a couple ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Members get all my courses included. Number two, take one of my courses, curtismichael.ca slash education. If you're watching this, you're probably most interested in getting started with Obsidian or getting started with Zettelkasten. Buckle up, let's look at creating a writing dashboard in Obsidian. So what we have here is actually my GitHub profile, and we're gonna basically start by building out uh, this right here, so you can see how much contribution I've done. So this is one measure uh, of how productive I am as a coder. Uh, although some of my repositories are private, not included, uh, I try to include a lot of them just so that you know possible employers can see that I do actually write code, but it doesn't always happen. So that's what we're going to build, and we're going to build that with the uh, activity history plugin. You can see I've got it there. I'm actually using live preview right now uh, in Obsidian because it works really well. So you can see here that you need this type of query. So it's three uh, backticks, activity history, and then long form community drafts. So I've actually told it to track my community projects in drafts. And you can see I have done not a ton <laughs> in it. So I just started tracking this very recently. And that's the other thing. It does not track your projects until you tell it to track them. So the way we do that is if I come in here and go to activity history, and then I just type it in track project, and I type in the file path. So uh, for that one, it would have been long uh, form community drafts, and then hit enter. Not going to do that and it gives you no feedback whatsoever. It does not tell you that a new project has been tracked or anything like that until you say click away and then click back. And then it would actually show up in this area that you have tracked something. Uh, and same with stop tracking project, you type in the path again and it will stop tracking, hit enter when you're done. There is no feedback whatsoever that anything has happened, unfortunately. You can also come in here and change some of your colors or they can change my activity color. Uh, I can change in, uh, change all the colors. I can change the cell radius. Uh, one is square, so I could change it to, oh, let's say five, right? Enter, I believe that's now saved. And that should well, not do anything to them. No, maybe only in the future. So I've seen in the um, GitHub thing, you can actually make them round if you want. So uh, yeah. That's activity history, uh, and that will give me this type of view right here for, uh, by default, it does your whole vault uh, slash, just the slash being the whole vault. Um, but if you tell it to track individual projects, you can track them. Next up is Obsidian commits. Now it's got a bunch of different options. Um, it's got uh, commit type, so I can look at the type of commit where they're adding, deleting, refactoring. Uh, commits weekly, so how many commits am I doing weekly? Commits daily and then recent ones, so the actual recent file you've changed. And there's multiple arguments in here, right? I can track the project, just like the activity history plugin, you have to add it. So if I come in here to commits, or as I probably just went past it, commits, exactly the same process. Track project, I would type long form community drafts, and then I hit save. This actually has some F save button. If nothing happens, it doesn't actually update until you, get, until you click away and then click back. Um, and then you can untrack a project as well. By default, it only tracks your uh, main vault. See, I've tracked writing here, my writing folder, and I've tracked the community drafts one. So when you can set the project here, uh, you can set the div width, and I'll show you all these, your height, the fill color, border color, grid color, and the alignment. And then for recents, there's another bunch of arguments, right? Project, a bunch of them are the same as the above, and the top commits, the number of commits it's going to show per item. So now let's go to our writing dashboard. As you can see here, oh look, it did update my uh, to round there. Perfect. So my writing dashboard. So this again is for activity history for long form community drafts. So this is my community project. Um, and you can see I have it there, and it will show me kind of basically, you can use this type of graph to continue to make progress. Look, I'm in progress every day. I'm in progress on my writing day all the time, stuff like that. My friend actually spent an entire year to write his name on GitHub, which was kind of funny, actually. Um, and then right here we have, what's this one? This one is uh, commits daily. So on the project, again, my community project, I set it to 50, and I've aligned it to the left. Now, unfortunately, this does not work with Live Preview very well. This does line up just fine if you're using the Legacy Editor. So Legacy Editor, you access by going to Editor, 
and I say use legacy and it's going to say hey you need to relaunch which I'm not going to do right now I'm going to leave it as is and then these two items would actually align side by side all right this is my what's this one this is the uh, recents so this shows me the recent files that have been changed right so I linked a new node multi-generational households that's all I did for it so now I actually do have a writing dashboard, a working dashboard here, and this is a few things. This is my whole vault right here. It's showing, you know, I've made progress, you know, lots of progress on the vault. It shows me my uh, commits type. So did I create, did I link, did I expand, or did I refactor? And here's the query arguments I'm using. Did with 50, align left. Again, alignment does not work uh, very well in live preview. All right, commits weekly, and I actually did some coloring here just to test it out. This is actually pretty ugly, so I would never actually use this. I would just, honestly, I would leave it as default because this is not, <laughs> it's not my thing. I'm not going to figure out the colors. Look, looks fine to me now. So it commits weekly. You can see Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. I don't do a lot. Saturdays, uh, I do almost nothing. Um, that actually makes sense to me. Mondays, I do a lot of most of my writing. Uh, Tuesdays, I might do a little bit. Friday. I guess it would count as a refactor now because it's a Friday I'm recording and I'm doing something. All right, and you can see my recent commits again. So this is using the recent commits argument. So div with 100, top commits three. So I limited it to three, right? One, two, three. Uh, if I change that to uh, top commits, no, oh, I don't know, say five. Then you can see I have five now. Now you notice also that the div does start to get a little outside you can see right here i'm kind of cut off at the bottom less than ideal uh, i could say div height and adjust that to increase the height so i could see more likely all of my uh, changes in there and then commits daily so this is just the month right how many commits am i making daily and now back to my community project which you've seen before all right same idea so that's the writing dashboard. I do like it. I think that it can, uh, especially the activity history part, can really tell you that, hey, I am continuing to make progress. I've made progress either on my writing day or I'm continuing to make progress every day. And that can be a good motivator for writers. So I think that's a good one. Uh, I think you should probably implement that uh, for yourself for writing if you find that motivating to you know keep the streak up. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. And as I always say, turn off your notifications, though, because you got other things to do, like hang with your kids, right? Stuff like that. You can support the channel, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Everyone or members get my newsletter and they get my courses included. Uh, or take one of my courses, curtismichael.ca slash education. You're most likely interested in the Getting Started with Obsidian, Getting Started with Zettelcasting courses. Have an excellent day.